Ah, the Earth. It's pretty cool. But you know, if it is so cool, why isn't there an Earth 2? Oh my god. Light No Fire, banger name if you ask me, is a recently revealed game currently in development by indie studio Hello Games, the team behind the perfectly uncontroversial sci-fi epic No Man's Sky. I'm going to be breaking down the trailer for LNF, because that hasn't been done a million times already. Uh, I'm also not going to wildly speculate, because we don't know what's going to be in the game. At least I'm not going to try and speculate. Eh, whatever. First things first, what is Light No Fire? LNF is a procedurally generated open-world survival game. I know you've heard it before, just hear me out. Set on a planet the size of the Earth. So, very big. Here's what we know. We know it's multiplayer. We know it's a fantasy game. We know it's a survival sandbox. We know it has RPG elements. We know it's been in development for five years. And that's it. There is no announced release date, okay? Everything else is pure speculation. Actually, that's really important to mention. We know nothing about this game. Some people are saying that it's an MMORPG. Some people are saying it's going to release before the end of 2023. That is not confirmed, okay? We know nothing. Here's some important things to consider regarding current information from the announcement and from the trailer. Sean Murray, co-founder of Hello Games, says that Light No Fire is maybe, maybe more, more ambitious than No Man's Sky. This does not mean it is more ambitious, nor does it mean it will be a better game. It is just the developer's perspective on what was a more difficult type of game to make, okay? Similarly, we need to separate figures of speech from literal promises. Light No Fire will not be... A planet that is as buried as a universe? Because there's no way to quantify that. The way I interpret it is that Light No Fire departs from No Man's Sky because it condenses variation to a single planet instead of spreading it across billions and billions of planets. That's still probably reading way too deep into it, I think it just means that the world of Light No Fire will have plenty of variation, and it's going to be detailed, which is cool. Something bigger than Earth? Yeah, I think he just messed up here. Oh no, he's relapsing. Something with, you know, mountains, real mountains, not video game mountains, but mountains that are miles high, taller than Everest. Okay, that's it. Take him off stage. Cut his mic. Seriously, though? This sounds insane. But I don't think it's too unreasonable. We know the planet is actually the size of the Earth, so maybe it's not that unrealistic to have mountains bigger than Mount Everest. Yeah, I mean, the first real open world, right? Something without boundaries. Sean Murray, do you realize how bad that sounds? But I think he means it, in some weird way. We don't know what the world of Light No Fire is like. However, there is a decent chance that it will indeed be a globe, meaning that you can circumnavigate it without any real boundaries. So, yep, there you go, a real open world. But man, this is why the studio's PR has been done entirely through cryptic messages for the past several years. And given the mess No Man's Sky was at launch, why should we trust the trailer this time around? Well. Hello Games have learned a lot since No Man's Sky came out. They have only shown real gameplay in trailers since the Foundations update, you know, seven years ago at this point. If they were to screw up, they would lose a community's trust, which they've carefully cultivated over almost a decade. And they have no publishers or investors to keep happy this time. It's all about the players. I think they are genuinely interested in creating good games. They've made No Man's Sky a real good game in my opinion without any real financial incentive no microtransactions aside from well i guess the one macro transaction of buying the game so i think it's really in their best interest to try and keep the players happy and to give them what they've shown so far on launch day something else people have been wondering about is whether or not this game is being built on the no man's sky engine well, if it is, that means that there's way less work to do on Hello Games' part. That means that, unlike No Man's Sky, where the first bit of development was probably just building an engine from scratch, they've already got one now. So that's going to really speed up the development process. Now, actually, about what we see in the trailer, the detail is way above anything we've ever seen in No Man's Sky. I don't think this is the exact same engine that No Man's Sky is running on, but I think it's probably a revamped version. 
For those of you that have been in the No Man's Sky news circle for a little, you may have heard of this one guy who would, uh, who would leak stuff apparently, but they'd always end up being right about their leaks because their messages were so vague. Well, one leak earlier this year was that the engine was being updated. If we are to believe this leaker, then what we see in the trailer today could be those updates to the engine made manifest. And rather than going into No Man's Sky, they were just going into Light No Fire, or what would become Light No Fire. There are also a lot of things in this trailer that looked like they were just dropped into No Man's Sky. Um, I think these could have either been as teasers for Light No Fire, or maybe trials, or just because Hello Games had the tech figured out, they decided they could use it. What stands out to me among these is the cloth tech. We got cloth tech in 2021 in No Man's Sky with the Outlaws update. Wait, no, actually that was 2022, early 2022, scratch that. And then we got more cloth tech again recently with the Echoes update. Um, this, this looks a lot like the cloth tech that we see in Light No Fire. Again, I don't know how, uh, how different cloth tech could be in one game to another, but because it's coming from the same developer, I imagine we can assume that these projects were being worked on in tandem, and maybe they just have some shared features, which could signal that they're on the same engine. There's also the matter of how the dragons take off in the trailer. First of all, I'm really excited to be able to fly a dragon or a kingfisher. It looks awesome, but the way they take off is very similar to how starships take off in No Man's Sky, one big vertical leap and then moving forwards. Um, it reminds me a lot of the flight assist in No Man's Sky, especially also how the dragon dodges the mountain early in the trailer. Um, I hope that doesn't make it to the final cut of the game, because I think it really kills the feeling of verticality and scale. It does mean that it looks a lot smoother for the trailer, so that could be why it was included, and maybe it's just not going to make it in. Or perhaps the footage was just sped up. The same goes for speed. If flying mounts in Light No Fire are as fast as they are in No Man's Sky, it could totally kill the sense of scale and immersion. It made sense in No Man's Sky because we're piloting sci-fi vehicles capable of FTL speeds, so something crazy like that is expected. But watching a bird or a lizard go that fast is a little jarring, and I've never seen something like that in real life except for that one time in 09, which was insane, man, you should have been there. So yeah, I hope some of these things were just for the trailer, but they do suggest that, they, that No Man's Sky and Light No Fire are running on some similar software. There's also the issue of the bird swarm that we see next to the big stone guy in the trailer. Um, in No Man's Sky, you sometimes get flying animals in these little swarms because they just spawn that way rather than as individual creatures as groups of them. And this is very similar to what we saw in the trailer for Light No Fire. Which, again, could which could suggest that some code was just ported over. Again, it could also suggest that some bits of the game are unfinished, so they are just moving code over from No Man's Sky. Or it could be nothing, and it could just be that I noticed something that wasn't actually there. Something else I've noticed is that movements are not nearly as stiff as they are in No Man's Sky. They have way more weight to them and look way better, too. I'm very much looking forward to how that's going to look in the final game. So now let's take a look at one of the most interesting parts of the trailer, the UI. It is clean, it is simple, it looks great, it's not cluttered at all, and it looks great overall. The easiest bit of the UI to decode is the right side, so let's take a look at that. In this slot we can see what weapon or tool is currently equipped, so I'm interested to see what kinds of weapon systems or tool systems we have available to us. We can have torches, swords, bows, staffs, and probably a lot more, and that probably does have some cool implications for combat. So now let's take a look at the top left, which appears to be a health bar. The circles represent health cores, kind of like in No Man's Sky, only without a shield. There's no armor, so if the game does have an armor system, maybe it just adds to the number of cores, or it acts like a hidden damage reduction system, kind of like your AC in Skyrim. Now let's look at the bottom left, where things start to get really weird, or really interesting, depending on your perspective, I guess. So, the top circle indicates your biome. But if biomes aren't clearly separate and distinct like they are in No Man's Sky, it could indicate like your general, sort of, type of area. Now the snowflake looks like a temperature gauge. Uh, we can see it moving in the beginning scene when the player leaves the water. Um, so basically it gets warmer as they leave. Um, the snowflake, what's weird about it is that in the swamp, uh, it appears hotter than the desert, 
This could be a bug, but my theory may, might be that it's because a player is holding a torch and there is like a heat system for light sources and torches. Now at the very center of the uh, bottom left UI element is where things start to get really interesting. I don't think that's a clock. It indicates daytime and nighttime, but my theory is that it isn't a clock, and here's why. When the player leaves the water, the circle quickly becomes full. My initial thought was that the big one represents temperature of the environment and the little one represents your character's temperature. But that just seems redundant. Why have both if they say a fairly similar thing? More likely is that it represents light level. Here is my reasoning. The circle is fairly empty at night, but not fully because when the character is holding a torch it's at a similar level to when underwater, because water scatters and absorbs light. I'm not saying the game is going to have realistic light physics. I'm, I'm just saying it's darker underwater. I was there, trust me. Still not convinced, in the shot of the desert, the gauge reads almost two-thirds full, despite the fact that it's almost nighttime. The sun is beginning to set, as indicated by the longer shadows, and the fact that the sun is setting. Why would a light gauge be the most prominent HUD element? More on that later. So, uh, I should also say, I have suspicions that the HUD was not recorded live in-game. Um, as Beeblebum pointed out in their analysis, the HUD changes before the clip does in one particular shot of the trailer, so it looks like it may have been overlaid in post, which makes sense. Hello Games almost exclusively record their trailers without a visible game HUD. Um, I don't think it means Hello Games is faking the completion level of the game, at least I hope not, but uh, it seems like they just chose to add it in post so that people could better understand the systems in Light No Fire as well as get a better idea of the game's visual identity. Does this entirely discredit the light theory? Um, eh, no, maybe a little bit, but I think it does still have the most merit because of what little we know about the game. I'm recording the second half to this first thing in the morning. Um, sorry if I'm sounding a little less enthusiastic. It also seems like you're going to be able to play as a bunch of different playable races, uh, ranging from humans, to horned humans, so maybe those are fawns or tieflings or just a unique species altogether, and you've also got different types of horns, like regular goat horns uh, and antlers. You also have polar bears and regular bears, well, sort of regular, because bears normally don't wear clothes, with the exception actually of the spectacled bear, but that one only wears glasses. And then there's also the Paddington bear. You're also going to be able to play as a badger, a pig, a fox, a rabbit, and frogs? Yeah, I can already tell this is going to be a very good game. We don't know this yet, but there's a chance that maybe different species could have different attributes. Maybe the rabbits are faster and have better hops, or maybe the frogs can breathe underwater. Obviously none of this is confirmed, but it could be what Sean meant by RPG mechanics. So about the environments, normally proc gen environments have a really bad rep, but going off what we see in the trailer, Light No Fire is going to have some really advanced tech. We have multiple different environments in one area, which is beyond anything we saw in No Man's Sky. We also have rivers, which is huge for uh, you No Man's Sky fans out there, um, and specially generated terrain for where land meets the water. Uh, you have a bunch of different pebbles and rocks scattered around where rivers meet, you know, the bank, and that looks, it looks great. Really, that's better than what we have in No Man's Sky, and maybe some of the best pure procedural generation that I've ever seen in a game. In addition to regular biomes like swamps, plains, fields, forests, we've also got some, we've also got some stranger environments, uh, like some wastelands, which look really cool and I'm excited to see how those play out. I imagine maybe those will be more dangerous. This is just speculation, but some people are saying that wastelands and stuff like that could be PvP-enabled zones, um, which I think is an interesting concept, whether that's going to make it into the final game or whether that's even been considered at all. We have no idea, but I think it'd be interesting. So within the various environments, we've also got uh, buildings and structures, some generated by the game and some built by players. So first we have these plaques, um, which look very similar to the alien plaques in No Man's Sky. We've also got ruins and different types of ruins. We have towers, uh, we have floating islands, and some unknown structures. So for the plaques, those um, have this design on them, uh, 
which is the same as the grate above the fireplace in the unknown structure. So maybe it belongs to the same faction, or maybe there's some sort of connection. So as for the ruins, we have various different types. In the, uh, what I'm going to call the Badlands or the Wastelands, we have these very gothic style ruins, and uh, in the more pleasant area we have these ruins that look like old fortifications on an island in the lake. So again, could be different factions, you know, in the promo material we're told it's an ancient earth, so maybe some ancient factions built this and that's why they're there today. Um, as for the towers we saw, those could maybe be beacons of a sort, they have fires on top. Um, so maybe those are waypoints, maybe those are like discovery markers like we have in No Man's Sky. Um, so could be, yeah, could be one of many things. Again, we have no idea. Uh, as for the floating islands, we have really no information about them except for the fact that they have this sort of green magical glow around them. And now moving on to the unknown structure. Uh, on the wall there's this motif that is... Uh, the same as the one on the player's shield. It's like a face. It reminds me of of a Gorgon, of Medusa. Um, whether it's actually that, no idea. Um, so yeah, this might serve as a faction-related thing. Uh, in the Unknown Building, we also have these rabbits serving as guards. So maybe uh, this can be like a, a, a rabbit faction that players can join, or, uh, or maybe there are tons of randomly generated guilds and stuff around the world that players can do quests for, assist. Again, pure speculation, we have no idea. There's a giant or an ogre, or perhaps both, sitting on a staircase with a doorway behind it. Um, it also seems to get up and look towards the player as they walk in, so maybe that's like a quest giver of sorts, or it's initiating some sort of um, some sort of interaction. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to be a combat interaction. Uh, so I, I actually wonder how much emphasis on combat there's going to be in the game. Um, you know, uh, Hello Games isn't known for making very combat-heavy titles. Um, so there's also these magical lights um, that have this sort of green glow around them. First, they just look really cool, but second, um, different colors of magic could signal different types of magic. For example, on the player characters, we sometimes see them carrying staffs, and we have a blue glow coming off of those, but in this unknown building, the magic seems to be green. So it could be that different factions have different colored magic, which is not something totally unheard of. Um, for example, in No Man's Sky, we have Sentinel Interceptors generally have a purple or red engine glow, whereas um, friendly ships have a, or NPC uh, trader ships have a, have a green engine glow, so it could be something like that. And the final structure, which I forgot to mention, were the balls. <laughs> okay, that's a good take. So they're massive. We have no idea what they are, of course, but my uh, guess is that they're probably important for lore. Um, it could be that they are just important points to travel to during the player's journey. You know, whatever that journey is supposed to look like. It's going to become a running theme, as I said. We have no idea. Um, some people have speculated that they could be dungeons, which makes sense because they do have this sort of maze-like uh, appearance on the outside. We have no idea. I think that they're probably more something lore-related because in the final scene of the trailer we do have the dragon flying towards one. So we also have player-built structures, and uh, I like the aesthetic of these, it's very cozy. Um, we also have some illuminated bits outside, again with this green magical aura around it. I think I've sort of uh, maybe changed my opinion about this. I think um, green, it, it just signals different types of magic, or instead of different faction-based magic, different type of magic. So maybe green could be like a more, maybe green is like a more helpful type of magic, but blue represents like a more combat focused magic or general magic. Uh, be, and the reason I say that is because there appears to be some sort of magical sphere outside one of the houses. I'm thinking it could be something like a fast travel point, similar to the base terminus in No Man's Sky. Something else I love is the animation for building walls out of stone. It looks fantastic. It's just so satisfying to watch. Uh, in front of one of the houses, we also have uh, what appears to be a grindstone or some sort of crafting table. 
which I think could tie into the upgrade system in the game. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there is one, it is a survival game after all. So now as for the creatures in Light No Fire, really every bit of the world seems to be populated in some way. Big Octopus, which looks really cool, I doubt it's going to be an enemy. Um, it really does give off a lot of vibes from the original No Man's Sky trailer. Underwater we've also got fish. If you scroll through the comments on the, the No Man's Sky reveal trailer, you have a lot of people in the comments mentioning the fact that it appears to have very good fish tech and fish AI, a sentence I never thought I'd say. Did we ever get the hyped up fish AI? No. In Light No Fire everything does appear to be real. so. We've got cool looking fish, but I think it's also that they have a good AI now. It's a nice nod back to the original reveal trailer 10 years ago at this point. They look great. The creatures in this game, they look fantastic. It's like, it's just a better version of No Man's Sky and I'm really excited for that. So now in terms of enemies, oh, I forgot to mention, <laughs> before we move on to enemies, um, as the player leaves the water in one of the opening scenes, you do see this little cat skunk thing walk by the camera. Maybe you can hunt it for meat, sad. I don't know why you'd kill the poor, the poor cat thing. There are probably better things to eat. Uh, maybe for its pelt, or maybe it's just there to populate the world and it doesn't really do anything. Speaking of eating, we do see players hunting what appear to be boar. I imagine either for meat, tusks, uh, you know, the pelt, maybe to sell, maybe to craft with, we don't know. Um, again, it's a survival game, use your imagination. Something else we see are birds. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, some birds, yeah, they appear to be like the little swarm spawn, but some uh, some are full-sized individual entities. So now in terms of enemies, we have, um, in one of the opening scenes, we have a skeleton um, that appears to be armed and emanating a sort of blue magic. Um, this reminds me of the skeletons and Draugr in Skyrim. It's like the third time I've made that comparison. I imagine that's going to be an enemy even though it has the blue magic around it, um, I don't think it's going to be a player because it'd be weird to let the players play as a skeleton, especially since the skeleton does not appear to have any sort of backpack or items on them aside from that one sword. Uh, we also have baby skeletons around the skeleton. They're probably not actually baby skeletons, but they appear more to be like little imps because they do have horns, which is a, uh, which is a really cool aesthetic choice, I think. <laughs> makes them seem a little like gremlins, you know, a little goblin-y, so that's, uh, it's pretty funny, but also implying that they aren't humans, so make of that what you will, I guess. I'm just interested to see how they play into the, uh, into the combat system. We also have crabs for enemies, so the big crabs obviously appear to be more, I wouldn't say a boss enemy, but definitely a much more difficult one. It does remind me, like, the purple and everything, of the new crab-like sentinels we got in the uh, the interceptor update, so maybe they will have similar attack patterns. You know, a um, a melee attack and a ranged one, and maybe defeating the crabs, you can use their shells for uh, for crafting tools or armor. Again, no idea. That's just what I think would make sense in a survival game. Something else interesting is that of the enemies we've we have seen, which is very few to be honest. They do seem to be very specific to their biome. The um, the skeletons that appear in the beginning of the trailer have this sort of yellowish sheen to them, which um, does tie in with a sort of yellowed, decaying backdrop that they're in. Um, as for the crabs, they look partially made of stone and they appear in a rocky place. I think there's um, maybe a little less of a connection there. But from what we can tell, um, this does tie into the unique enemies thing that was mentioned in the promo material. So I, do, I think some enemies are definitely going to be biome specific. Um, the skeletons, probably for sure, or maybe we'll have different types of skeletons for different biomes. Um, I'm just interested to see this go, to see how this goes. I'm really excited, even if, it, even if I'm not really showing it right now. I did just wake up but I'm excited to see where it goes. In terms of other creatures, friendly or neutral, don't know, we have the ogre and the rabbits. Um, I think that's going to be more of like a quest-based or faction-based thing. I do think we're going to have uh, sentient creatures as NPCs. Don't know what else to say about that. Moving on. I'm, I'm just scrolling through my notes. 
so combat and tools. Obviously we're going to need to harvest resources, uh, I imagine through the use of an axe. Uh, early on in the trailer we see a player wielding a stone axe to chop down a tree. I think that signals that we might have different tiers of weapons based on the material. Kind of like, you know, in Minecraft you've got the uh, wood, stone, iron, and so on. I think we're going to get something similar. Uh, because in the trailer we just see someone using a stone axe, and I imagine in a game of this scale and this scope we're probably going to have more than just stone. Also, as mentioned earlier, we have swords, bows, staffs, shields. Well, I didn't mention shields earlier, but yeah, we have those. Um, oh no, I did mention shields. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> a ton of different weapons, which I imagine could lean into a ton of different play styles. You know, whether you can be a... In, um, you know, a ranged archer, like a sort of glass cannon build, or if you want to be like, you know, a tanky paladin, you can totally do that. Or, you know, even a magic caster who's somewhere in the middle. I imagine the game's going to let you do that. So, you've also got different types of armors and cloaks. Some, pl some players do seem to be lightly armored. I don't think we've seen any, like, real heavy armor yet, but mostly just light stuff. And cloaks. Um, cloaks seem to be worn by archers and by magic casters. Maybe different armor sets have different benefits. Uh, we saw a character in the trailer wearing a witch hat and a cloak, so maybe that gives like a buff to, to magic casting in some way. Maybe the game is going to let us spec into different playstyles. That remains to be seen, but I I would not be surprised if it, if it does. Again, Sean mentions RPG mechanics, so that may as well be what he's talking about. Um, real quick, I do want to go on a brief tangent and mention one of the artists over at Hello Games, Bo Lamb. Um, I love his artwork. Um, I love scrolling through his concept art for No Man's Sky. It's really cool. He's got some stuff on the old exocrafts, the different concepts for those. You can see where the inspiration for the, for the ones that exist today come from. Um, but he also had some other stuff unrelated to No Man's Sky that's just been on his art station for a while. And at first I thought it was related to The Last Campfire somehow, because his artwork and The Last Campfire did have a sort of aesthetic match. <laughs> now that we've seen Light No Fire, it does seem very similar. Um, especially like that big stone guy we saw looks straight out of his artwork. Is this a, Does this signal how long they've been working on it? I don't know. Um, I think it's just something cool to note, because his artwork is first of all fantastic and he definitely deserves recognition for it. But I think it also gives a brief look into the sort of basis for Light No Fire's visual identity. So yeah, check out Bo Lamb's art station. So uh, now back to the actual video. No. So now looking at traversal, like in No Man's Sky, um, you've got swimming, you've got walking, which um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I needed to mention that. I don't think I did. Um, if you're surprised by that, I've got news for you, because this game also includes jumping, which is actually something No Man's Sky did not include. Um, so think about that for a second. That's weird, No Man's Sky. There's no jumping except for the rocket boots, but I don't think that really counts. Okay, now stop thinking about it because it's not important. In terms of traversal, obviously you've got your dragons and your kingfishers and your birds and your mounts. It looks, it looks awesome. Um, I think it's a really cool way of traversing the world and totally fitting in with the, the aesthetic. Um, I'm probably going to cut this from the video, but it kind of reminds me of that animated movie Epic, where like that girl shrinks down and she becomes really small, but everybody rides hummingbirds and stuff, and there these, uh, and there were these snails, and they were like the comic relief characters, but I just remember them being unfunny. Um, what was I saying? Right, mounts. You can use bows while on a mount, it seems. Um, based on the UI, when a character jumps on the uh, on their dragon in the uh, in the trailer, we do see the UI switching from a torch or a staff to a bow, so maybe this implies some aerial combat of sorts, um, which would be awesome. In terms of different mounts, uh, yeah, we've got the dragons. Uh, these dragons are a little different to your typical fantasy dragons, I guess, because these have uh, four limbs instead of six, um, because for their front legs they have wings rather than having back legs, front legs, and another pair of appendages for their wings. Um, we also have the kingfishers I mentioned earlier, those look really cool. And also it appears to be um, blackbirds, it kind of looks like a blackbird. It's a bird and, and it's black, so there we go. 
Um, we also have round mounts, uh, antelopes. I don't know about horses, actually. And mounts do seem to carry backpacks, so maybe extra inventory space on them. Um, also, what I'm very excited for is gliders, a la Breath of the Wild. There's a structure on the top that looks a little bit like a crossbow. I don't think it is. I think it's just part of the, uh, uh, the frame of the glider. Um, so maybe this game will also have a Breath of the Wild style climbing system, you know, so you can jump off of places and actually use your gliders. And sailboats, too, is something that you can see very prominently in the trailer and also in the promo material. Um, I don't know how deep sailing is going... Haha, <laughs> that's, that's an unintentional pun. I don't know how deep the sailing is going to be. Um, uh, it's probably a solution to traversal over, um, uh, over oceans. I imagine the oceans are going to be absolutely enormous in this game because it is the size of Earth. I don't think they're going to be as big as Earth's oceans, but still mind-bogglingly large regardless. Uh, early on in the trailer, we do see a sailboat that appears to have sunk. Oh, also, these sailboats have like this um, crown or, how do you say, what, what, what's the word? Sun, I forgot the word for sun. That's how, that's how much time I've been spending indoors re-watching the trailer. Uh, sun motif on top of the main mast. Again, faction related. Maybe, maybe the players all belong to like uh, the same starting faction. Or maybe we learn boat, boat instructions from the same faction. Um, or maybe one guy's going around just placing his own symbol on top of everybody's boats and he's a total nuisance. We just don't know. Um, I'm excited to see how the sailing works. I think that's going to lead to a lot of, um, I'm going to utter the dreaded words, emergent gameplay. You know, you're going to, you're going to have to, I imagine, get provisions and really plan out your boat trips if, unless you're just going puddle hopping. I think that's something No Man's Sky was really missing where you actually had to prepare your expeditions. Um, that, sort, that sort of stops being a thing early on into the game. But by having survival be a constant threat in Light No Fire, and that's going to lead to a lot more challenge. It's gonna be maybe just more fun in general. Maybe more tedious, but maybe more fun. We don't know. Now that we're moving to the, uh, to the end of everything, the ending graphic. My notes here are very vague. What was I thinking? So what stands out here? We've got the ball. We've got the, is that at all related to the Atlas? We've also got um, this image of stone collapsing and crumbling. Um, so maybe that has something to do with the Atlas's death because, uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't finished um, the main quest for No Man's Sky, the Atlas, the god of the simulation, the universe itself is it's in pretty bad shape. Perhaps this... So, okay, for context. Atlas, dying, black hole, sucking, death. That's not going in the final video. We see the, the stone sort of lift off of the structure in the ending graphic. So maybe that could be stone being absorbed by a black hole. That is a bit of a stretch, but it could be what they're sort of going for if they are planning on making it so that the two narratives of Light No Fire and No Man's Sky are indeed connected. Uh, we also see a hand reaching up for this torch-like uh, structure with a little guy on the hand. The hand seems to have this sort of um, dark stone surface and underneath it um, gold. Something else uh, very interesting is that there's this cross little glow on the ball and that little symbol seems very, very similar to the white um, little X or cross on the symbol for the space anomaly, No Man's Sky. Again, does this imply a connection? Perhaps, perhaps not. We don't know. Um, but if you want to speculate, that's where it is. Also, recently the team that designed the Light No Fire logo revealed some of their early iterations. Most of them were crazy cool. Some of them were just pure crazy, but some were crazy cool. Um, I'll show you some of my favorites. In many of the logos and graphics, there are a few consistent themes which appeared in the final version. The hand, the orb, the torch, the hero, and the cross. I'm calling the pedestal thing a torch because it kind of reminds me of one. Um, as for the hero, there's a file, um, one of the files for the logo on the Steam page refers to it as the hero. Um, and the cross, because it's a plus sign, it's, it's two, it's two crossed lines. Um, 
and the orb, you can guess why I'm calling it that. Um, what a lot of these unused logos suggest is that the hand, um, is that the hand and the orb it contains are some kind of megastructure. Maybe it's not related to the atlas, um, but we just don't know. Um, what is interesting is also the cross motif, because in some of the early con uh, concept arts it does look like a compass rose. So maybe this ties into the theme of exploration, or maybe implying that this orb is some kind of destination. I don't want to make any useless, I don't want to make any baseless conjecture, so just make of that what you will. So now for the title, Light No Fire, what does that mean? Um, so some people are suggesting that Light No Fire means, well, I guess, to not light a fire. <laughs> I know that sounds stupid, but to not draw attention to oneself. Perhaps there's something looking for the players. Again, we're told in the promo material that the players are not the heroes. So I guess they have no grand place in the narrative. Um, so maybe they're being hunted by something. The concept of not lighting a fire may also tie into nighttime. Um, why do we light fires? To push away the night. That sounded very poetic. I'm putting that in the video. So perhaps whatever's hunting the players seeks them out at night. Um, we haven't seen much gameplay at nighttime. So I believe that also could have something to do with the light gauge in the UI. Maybe depending on the light level of the surroundings that determines maybe what kind of creatures can spawn or whether an area is dangerous or not. If you light no fire, then you're in danger, something like that. Um, or if you do light a fire, you put yourself in danger. I think light gate, the, I think light levels will have something important to do with the overall gameplay loop as implied by the title. I think the title is just really cool. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that there. Final thoughts and ideas. Uh, fast travel, I think should be limited. Um, I think if the whole point of the game is the traveling, then fast travel sort of, it sort of kills that. Um, you know, in No Man's Sky, for example, traveling is trivial because you can use a spaceship. And that makes it, it, it makes a lot of the time traveling across planets just not all that fun because there's, not only are the planets a lot of the time uninteresting, I, that's a personal opinion also because I've spent hundreds of hours playing, but because it's trivial once you get, uh, once you get a practical spaceship with recharging launch thrusters and everything, I don't know. Anyways, I think fast travel should be limited because the traveling is the whole point of this game. If it does exist, it should be something that really ties into the risk reward. Um, so for example, it, it could be something that can only be used with great rarity, or maybe it's just like a one-time use thing. That once you craft a fast travel item, it only provides one single instance of fast travel. Hell, it might even be to a random spot on the map. You know, that, that could actually lead to some very interesting gameplay. Really, I think fast, just in summary, I think fast travel should be limited. I think it's a good way to make it fun if traversal by foot or by mounts is engaging and fun as is, then there's no need for a fast travel system seen in the likes of other open world games. Um, but despite all this, all the speculation, I think the team at Hello Games should be cautious about how they listen to the community at this stage. Um, they have a vision in mind and they should strive for that. No Man's Sky in its current state was designed by both players and developers alike, and this is great because No Man's Sky really is a go anywhere, do anything experience, but it dilutes many aspects that actually make it a game. Choice has little consequence because the game has to appeal to basically every single possible player. Looking back at the 4.0 waypoint update, the community was highly divided because it made player equipment significantly weaker, and some welcomed it as a needed balance change, but others protested that it nerfed characters that had been maxed out over years of play, and some people were really hurt because they'd spent so long tweaking their characters. And it just, I think, shows that you can't please everyone. And I'm not saying No Man's Sky's aim to please everyone was a bad thing, it's a unique experience, and I wouldn't want it any other way. I just hope Light No Fire doesn't fall into a trap where it tries to be the game for everyone. Restrictions and risks can breed important choices, and that leads to challenging and interesting gameplay. It's okay for fast travel to be limited, for weapons to have clear drawbacks, and for players to face the consequences of bad decisions, because making risk an inherent part of the experience allows for more varied gameplay, and ultimately makes challenges feel more rewarding when you overcome them. TLDR, just let Hello Games cook.